Okay, so let's say uh, I want to represent the decimal number what we think of normally, 30. And I want to represent that in hexadecimal, which is a base 16 number system. Uh, now, before you, can, before you answer this, I'll let you know 16 to the 0 is 1. 16 to the 1 is 16, and 16 to the 2 is 256. Um, so those will be your, your three different positions in the number uh, ahead of time. So that's what I've written here. You have our three different categories here. The 1s, the 16s, and the 256. So think of this, you know, this is the ones, this is the tens, this is the one hundreds, like in de decimal, but they count for different now because you have a base 16, which is higher than a base 10, uh, so you have more ways to represent numbers. Uh, so you're going to get higher numbers here. Uh, so I want to represent 30 decimal in hexadecimal, which is base 16. Well, I know that we have to use at least the second digit because, wait, did I say 30? I meant 20. I'm going to do 20 just because it's easier to understand. So if we're doing 20, I know it has to be at least in the second category, or it has to use at least two digits because the first digit goes from, you can represent from 0 to 15. Uh, 20 is higher than 15, so we have to use that second digit. Now, we know that second category counts for 16. So if we were to put a 1 there, that would, be, that would give us 16, which is pretty close to 20. If we were to put a 2 there, that would give us uh, 16 times 2. That's 32. Uh, that's a little too much. That's over 20. So we know that it has to be a 1 there. Uh, now, for the first category, for the first digit, uh, well, we have a six. We have a one in the second category. Well, let me let me put that here real quick. All right. So we know we have a one in the in the second digit. That counts for sixteen. So one times sixteen, sixteen. We're going for twenty. So if we already have sixteen represented, there's four left that we have to represent. And the last column we have is our ones column, and we need four, four ones. So we put a 4 there. That gives us the hexadecimal number 14. And if you put this in any hex translator, you'll see that it ends up being uh, 20 in decimal. So that we did our first decimal to hex translation. Now, let's say we have, let's see here, what's a good hexadecimal number to use? Let's say we have 33 in the hexadecimal, just a 3-3. Three, three. So what that will give us is this. I wrote, wrote it down. We have in our first, in our first digit a 3, in our second digit another 3. We know that the first digit uh, counts for 1, and the second digit counts for 16, because 16 to the 1 equals 16. So we know we have three 16s. Now let's see here. 16 times 3, that's 48. So we know we have 48. Let's write 48 down just to add it up. So we get 48 from the second digit. Now in the first digit, let's see, I'm all confused. In the first digit, we have three. And this represents ones. So we have three ones. Three times one is three. So we add that to our previous uh, total. That gives us 48 from the second call, uh, digit, and then 40, uh, three from the first uh, digit. So 48 plus 3 equals 51. So 33 in hex equals 51 in decimal.
And you can look that up in a hex translator. Uh, let's see here. Now, I guess we can do binary. Or, no, wait, no, let's do octal. So, for octal, it's, it's a base 8 uh, syst uh, number system. So, your first digit is 8 to the 0, that's 1. Anything to the 0 is 1, by the way. That's a, an algebraic rule. Uh, it's, it makes things really easy. So, we have 8 to the 0 is 1, 8 to the 1 is 8, 8 to the 2 is 64, 8 to the 3, I don't know what uh, 8 to the 3 is, uh, but it's 64 times 3, or 64 times 8, which is a pretty high number. You won't really need to, uh, to know it though. Uh, you can get a calculator if you'd like. So, I'm going to pose you for the challenge. And I want you to write. I want you to write the number. Uh, let's see here, 580. That's the decimal number. 580. So just 580. I want you to write that in octal. Now I also want you to write. Let's see here, 100 in octal. I want you to write that in, in decimal. So the number you're given in octal is 100. And I want you to write the decimal number of it, what it, what it represents in decimal, what we think of it. Um, and if that's, if that's too easy for you, let's see here. Write out, translate the octal 223 that's the, an octal number, translate that into a hexadecimal number. Uh, so when you figure that out, just post on the comment or message me um, and see if you get it right. Uh, we'll see here. I think that's about it. I'm pretty sure it's not going to take you this short a time to, to figure out fully what the number systems are. By the way, the technical term for this is radix. R-A-D-I-X. Uh, so you can look that up on wiki if you want to. Um, uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, just message me or comment on this, and I'll try to answer them for you. It takes a long time to understand this, because mo most people don't think of numbers in this way. Uh, so it's, you kind of have to deconstruct how you've been thinking about numbers and then reconstruct it in this manner so you can translate between hex and decimal and binary and octal and any number system that you want. So there you go. Hope that helped at least somewhat.